In a recent comment, I was asked, is it better to start a painting with the shadows? Well, there are many kinds of shadows and reasons why you should. Let's take a look at that. All right, before we can begin, let's just put a very uh, simple little sketch here of, of a subject I want to ship to work with. That's this, this apple. The apple has shadow, has strong light, uh, different kinds of shadows there. So let's just get the apple down, the, the, an image that would represent the apple down first. And uh, then, then let's look at what causes us to see that apple the way we do. Now, one thing that causes us to see the apple the way we do is the cast shadow. And so the cast shadow then is a part of the apple. So we wouldn't want to just start a painting by painting only the shadows of the apple, but we would start a painting uh, that, that would include the shadows that form what we see the apple to be. Now let's take a look at that. Where is the shadow on the apple? Well, uh, if I'm looking at it closely, I can spot the shadow on the apple as going something like this. Sort of like that. And then we see that is a form shadow. A form shadow is the shadow that is on the image itself uh, that's being caused because the image is turned away from light. So now we have cast shadow, form shadow. We have another shadow that's cast shadow. But that's a shadow that's on, that's caused by something outside the subject. So we have that shadow, cast shadow, on the apple itself. So it's about right here, and about this shape right here. But then we have that cast shadow that's joined to the cast shadow of something else. And so what we need, what we should do then when we are setting up for a painting, or we're setting up to get started with the painting, is not just look for the shadows on images, but look for the entire shadow field. Now let me show you how that works. So we have the shadow. I'm going to start with the cast shadow. In this case, the cast shadow is cast on blue. And so that cast shadow um, ends up being it, it, taking the color of the apple plus the color of the blue. Now, I don't particularly care for that blue as a subject, but that happens to be the photograph, so we'll do that. So we'll start with cast shadow. Cast shadow, if you'll start building the cast shadow first, then you'll begin to build a shadow field that shows the entire relationship of shadow to light. So now we would call, uh, over there, there's a little bit more of that cast shadow that from the uh, leaves that falls right over here. I'm not going to try to do the whole thing. I just want to plot enough for you to see uh, where we're going. Now, this is a part of this. All shadows are related to each other. And so rather than just to say, okay, this is the shadow on the apple, form the apple, the shadow and the light. No. Do all the shadows first. Do the shadows of the entire composition first. So watch how this works. Uh, on the apple itself, okay, we'll take a dark red to, to form the apple. On the apple itself, we see the, the uh, form shadow, not the cast shadow, but the form shadow. That was the wrong color. I'm getting another one. The form shadow, though, is the same value. In many cases, is the same value as the cast shadow. It may be a little darker, or it may be a little lighter, but the important thing is that we observe it in the same value range. So then we would, then we would form the form shadow. And we all just think about this in terms of shadow, the shape of shadow. If you're thinking you're trying to form the shadow on an apple, you might revert to something you remember rather than something you see. But if you're looking just for shadow, you'll draw just shadow. Now, see the, the form shadow of the apple then is a part of the shape of shadow. Then we'll move over here and we'll find other form shadows. Uh, this is a cast shadow, uh, other shadows I should say. We'll do the cast shadow here. Then we would, then we would go into the green areas and do the cast shadows of the green areas. And so we have a cast shadow here and that is joined to this cast shadow. 
So all the cast shadows are rela are related. And then we move all around the uh, all around the subject like that, doing the shadows. Now, the the shadow field. Now, when we begin to work the object itself, we begin to squint, and we'll see there is a suggestion of shadow throughout the entire background. Right in here, there's a suggestion that things are more things are in shadow than in light. Well. We can begin to work that shadow, and when we do that, we see that the shadow area around the object actually begins to shape the object itself. So we'll put a little bit of this around like this, I'll go this way, this way, because this represents that shadow we see in the background there. Now we have formed the outside edges and the cast shadow and the form shadow, we have some tiny little shadow in there that we need to uh, to honor because that also is a part of it. And what kind of shadow is that? That that happens to be a combination of cast shadow and form shadow. So it's form shadow, but it appears about right here. It's form shadow as it moves down like that. And then we see a little bit of cast shadow. See, you don't have to know what it is in order to in order to draw it or to paint it, but it helps, it doesn't hurt. From that point then, we can begin to build the subject itself. Now, I'll begin to build the other colors of the subject itself, so I'm going to briefly go through this, not trying to get an exact uh, reproduction of the, of the apple itself, but I want to go through just enough of it so you can see how this whole thing works. So then, now, the red of the apple. and a little bit of that right there. We could actually blend it. Now we can blend the red of the apple, but we can blend what's not in shadow of the red of the apple into the shadow. And we begin to see how the shadow actually forms or acts to form the red of the apple. Same thing right over here. And we see other colors in that apple too. Let's see, that seems to extend a little bit more over like that. Let's get that defined like that. We see other colors too. So we see this color. We see this color as a part of the red of the apple. We see this color is part of the red of the apple. Now we're now we're placing this color against the background shadow, so that we can see now that the background shadow begins to, uh, shadow area, I should say, the background shadow field begins to define or help define. We'll put a little bit more of that right in here. The background value field begins to help define how we see the apple. So we we need all the we need the shadow, uh, the shadow area and the not in shadow area in order to be able to see the whole thing. But if we put the shadow area in area in first, then that, that helps to find that helps to find the whole image. Let's work that that uh, this form shadow right here just a little bit more. It's got some, I see a little bit of green in there. Look that just in more. But remember, their shadow, their when you with any paint you're working with, there are shadow values, and those are usually the color or the values of color that are about uh, beginning about five or five and a half value, and then goes up from five, six, seven, eight, nine. So if you'll think of your values of colors as being uh, first of all, are they in shadow? Are they not in shadow? If they're if they're in shadow, then those values are only going to be values five, six, seven, uh, eight, nine, or ten. And if they're not in shadow, they're going to be the lighter values. If you have your in shadow values first, and now I'm going to go back and define some more in shadow values. If you have your in shadow values first. Then you set, you set the stage 
for shadow relating to shadow and light relating to light and you're able to make then a better representation of the subject that you're working with. Okay, to summarize, the reason it's better to put the shadows in first, it gives you that, that core skeleton, sort of like putting the, the structure of uh, the two by fours of the structure of the house up before you put the walls in. And, and you think of shadows as belonging to shadows, not shadows belonging, belonging to images. So think shadow, not image, and you'll find that your paintings will absolutely almost paint themselves. So if you found this quick tip helpful, why not explore our full-length instructional videos? At DianeMice.com we have over 100 full instructional downloads and DVDs. So give it a try. And there's your quick tip.